Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be talking about the worst makeup products of 2021, the products that did not work for me. So if you want to see what they are, you want to talk some trash, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a parodic knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And while I try a lot of great, amazing products, there are some products that just don't work out for me. So these are the products that I just wasn't feeling this year so far. Now, I hate to have to do a disclaimer, but somebody gets their feelings hurt every time. I just wanted to let you know, if you like the products that I am talking about, that is okay. That is amazing. I am so happy that it worked out for you. We might have very different preferences in makeup, different skin types, all of that. That's why there are so many different brands and items on the market. These just didn't work out for me, and I'm going to explain why I don't like them and why they don't work out for me. But again, just because I don't like a product does not mean it's not good. It could very well work fabulous for you. So if you disagree with me, I would love to hear it in the comments down below. Tell me what you do like about it. All right, so the majority of these products are more high-end. I have a couple affordable options in here, but for the most part, the high-end options are in here because we pay a lot of money for them, so I expect greatness from them. So those are mostly the reasons why this is all high-end. You know, if it disappoints me, I paid a lot for it. It shouldn't disappoint me. But the first item that we are going to talk about is an affordable makeup item, but it was so big on TikTok that I had to put it in here. This is the NYX The Marshmallow Primer. First of all, this is actually pretty expensive for a drugstore item. I believe the full size is like $17, $18. That's a lot. For a drugstore primer, NYX really be playing with us, but I did get a travel size, which was great because this does literally nothing for me. I just don't understand. I do believe a lot of people said that this was smoothing to the face. I don't notice any smoothing really happening. That being said, I don't have the biggest pores, but if anything, I feel like this dries my face out. There's no hydration to it at all, and it just kind of sits on the skin. It's an added step that really has no benefit to my makeup routine. And again, remember, I am on the outskirts of this. Most people seem to like it, but I cannot figure this product out. I cannot get it to work. I think one of the most disappointing products this year, I just feel like these products were not on their A game, are foundations. There actually are way more foundations that I tried this year that I didn't like, but these are the ones that stood out to me that I was like, oof, these are not good. So we're going to talk about the two that I'm wearing. So the first one is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. So many people love this. It looks horrible on me. I look dry like the Sahara Desert and I've tried all the ways to apply. I've taken all of your advice. I just don't like it. It does not look good on my skin. It's very, very full coverage, but just looks so dry and heavy on my skin. No matter what I do, no matter how much or how little I put on, I can't get it to work for me. Now, I did mix it today. I am wearing it on my face with the Huda Beauty Glowish multi Dew Skin Tint. So this is the next product that did not work out for me. If you want to see my video of this on its own, all over my face, I was a sweaty, greasy, oily, disgusting looking mess. And yeah, I don't like this either. First of all, this was my mistake, but the color completely off. This is light medium. It's more so of a medium shade if you ask me comparing it to what other medium kind of toned products are. The finish of it is way too greasy, oily, and glowy. I wish they would have marketed this as something to mix with other products as opposed to wear on its own because it's, it's a bit much for me. I don't really like it. I do have dry skin, so I thought I would like it. I don't. It's way too dewy. Now, I was able to make this work, and actually, I mixed these two, and I feel like these really counteract each other and all the things that I don't like about them. Because this is so dry, this helps add some dewiness, some glow to the skin. This is a bit too light and this is way too dark, so it also created a good color for my skin tone as well. This has way too much coverage. This, I mean, this actually has decent coverage, but 
it lightened up the coverage, but I still feel like this is overtaking the Huda. Like my skin looks a little bit dry right now, but I will say putting them together, I don't hate my base. It actually looks quite perfected. So together these two look good, but when I'm done with these, I am not repurchasing either of these. They don't do much for me. They're tolerable together, but on their own, I can't do it. The Hood is actually a bit more versatile. Like I'm happy to mix this with other products, but still you pay a lot for this and it just doesn't work the way that it should. So that's why it's more disappointing for me. So keep in mind for a lot of these products, it is possible for me to make them work. I created this look. I like this look. My makeup looks good and it's with the products that I really didn't like. It's just the journey to get there. You know, if I'm paying a lot of money for a product, it should work right away. I shouldn't have to adjust my routine. For a lot of these products, I do feel like I had to adjust my routine too much. I don't return makeup items too often just because the waste that it, like it hurts my soul to see them just throw the item in the trash. You know, at least it has a little bit more value in my collection for when I do bad products or I can give them away to somebody who might like them. So that's why if you're wondering, I don't return these items really. I mean, I'm very lucky to be in a situation where I get paid to purchase these products and I can help other people. Most of the time I don't return makeup for that reason and it's just going into the trash if I return it. Different if this is not your job and you do not get paid to try the products. So that's my rationale for that. Okay, let's move on to the next product. And this is mostly because of the price. So I could not get the Westman Atelier Vital Stick Foundation Stick to work out for me. This is in the shade Atelier 2, in case you were wanting to try this out. This looks super duper dry on my skin. I don't really love the way that it blends out. I, it, I just feel like it sits on top of the skin as opposed to like blending into my skin. You can just see it like sitting there and this is a very very pricey foundation and I have a lot of other foundations that are around this price range and I'm not afraid to spend money on a good foundation. Some of my absolute favorite foundations are very pricey luxury foundations but I do feel like luxury foundations if it's a good one has a very special soft look on the skin that I don't find with a lot of other foundations so I'm not afraid to throw down some money for a good luxury foundation. This is not a good luxury foundation in my opinion. Did not work for me. Okay, so this one is probably the most affordable foundation I'm talking about, but I didn't like it. And that is the Sephora Collection Best Skin Ever Foundation. Now, I did just recently do a full face of Sephora Collection. I tried a different foundation. I heard this was Sephora's best foundation. A lot of people were loving it. It wasn't for me. Again, just like all of the other foundations that I'm mentioning, you can see I have a pattern here. I do have more normal to dry skin, so you might actually like the foundations that I'm talking about. But this also made my skin look very dry. And again, it looked a little bit cakey on my skin. It looked like it was sitting on top of my skin. Now, this isn't the most full coverage of the ones that I'm talking about. It actually probably gives the least coverage minus the Huda Beauty Skin Tint. And yeah, it still looks like cakey on my skin despite it being a thinner foundation. Now, I've heard a lot of people who do have oily skin really like that so that might be the downfall here I just don't have the correct skin type for it but I don't know it's just when I wear it it just doesn't look good it looks like I'm wearing a not good cheap foundation so yeah not a lot of concealers came out this year but there was one that I just didn't like I don't even know that this came out this year maybe it came out last year but anyways I've not been liking this this is the Marc Jacobs extra shot caffeine concealer it's supposed to have caffeine in it to wake you up I don't know I feel the same I've been wearing this on my under eyes and the wear on this is just not very good. And you can also wear this as foundation. It's kind of marketed as being able to be used as both a foundation and a concealer. And I have used this so many times. I'd argue this is actually one of my most used concealers this year because for some reason I was like, I'm gonna make this work for me. I was determined and every single time my under eyes just did not look good. <laughs> There's something about it where my under eyes look very dry. It sinks into my fine lines. Upon initial application, I'm, I'm always like, like, oh, it looks okay. I mean, right now it looks fine. But at the end of the day, I, I've aged 10 years after wearing this. So this just, it doesn't work for me. I don't like it. I'm not a fan of it. I tried really hard to get this one to work for me, but it just doesn't. I'm gonna get to setting powders, but I actually wanna go to the cream blushes first, just because that's the order that I applied them. And so many cream blushes came out this year, powder blushes as well, but cream blushes are what brands seemed to be pushing out. So there were some amazing cream blushes to have come out, but with the vast 
number that have come out. There also is a lot of ones that I didn't like that came out. So the first one that we're going to talk about, some of you, I know my fellow Natasha stands, you guys know I'm a Natasha stan, but I wasn't going to sugarcoat this review. I didn't like the Natasha Denona Puff Paint Liquid Blush Serums. On my channel, you know who you are. I have Natasha fans, I have Pat fans, and every time I say something a little less than positive, people try and tell me how to make it work, they tell me how they love it, and I'm wrong. Like, I, these aren't worth the money, in my opinion. So they're workable. I can make them work. I personally just feel like you have to work too hard to make them work. Now, where I like these are with something really light, like a skin tint. So if I'm going for a no makeup makeup kind of look, I love my milk makeup skin tint, and then I'll put these on top, and they are perfect perfect but i can also manipulate any of my other cream blushes to work with the skin tint so i feel limited in where and how i can use these particularly the shades i believe this is nude and then this one is daria why can i not find the name on here i feel like the name is not on here but i believe this is nude and this is daria anyways particularly these two they really just disappear on the cheek i feel like i have to put so much product in my cheek literally paint a thick layer on the of my skin to get them to really show up and they have this weird way of me not being able to tell if it lifts the foundation underneath or not like I feel like I can see my skin underneath it doesn't move the foundation to make it look bad or break anything down but the way that it sits on the skin I feel like I can see my skin underneath which I don't like but anyways these are so extremely sheer I feel like they just blend away and again they really only look good with skin tints in my opinion that's the only way that I will wear these and even then I shouldn't be limited you know I do like the deepest shade right here this is the one that is visible but it looks really really scary so that goes to show you how sheer these are that it takes a color that looks this dark to be able to show up so I like this one but the other two were pretty big disappointments to me we're gonna go over the second cream blush that i'm wearing on my cheek that i layered over top of the natasha because you couldn't see them and that is the rare beauty melting blush in the shade nearly neutral now this it's beautiful it applies beautifully the problem is in 20 minutes i feel like it disappears in order for it to stay i definitely need to set it down with a powder blush but i just don't want to have to do that sometimes you know i layered it so i layered this and i layered this on top and i feel like my blush is fading away by the second now <laughs> it, it looks like a nice subtle blush right now i prefer a lot of blush color personally i put on more blush initially and it's already fading it just doesn't last long enough it's a really gorgeous blush and i really enjoyed the formula but if it doesn't last there really is no point so that's kind of why i don't like this one okay this next one i do realize it's partially my fault or majority <laughs> my fault that i don't like this but i just need to talk about it because i spend a lot of money and i can't return it so let me complain really quickly about the chanel multi-use stick in printinier now i have two of these and i've learned I don't like the Chanel multi-use sticks first time. Shame on you, Chanel. I did not like that formula. Second time with this one, shame on me for buying the same formula. But these guys have literally no color. Since cream blushes were so in style, I thought that this would be a gorgeous sheer cream blush, but in all reality, it's just like a balm stick. And I feel like they don't really advertise it as a balm stick. And they have a lot of shades of these, which also makes it more confusing for me. If they had one or two shades in these balm sticks, fine. I get it. Yes, but the fact that this came out in a collection of like four other colors, not to mention I got tricked the first time with it in another collection for a color that I thought was going to be like a bronzer color. They both show up exactly like this, so I just think the sh number of colors is a bit unnecessary. For me, where I use this and how I've been able to make this work, get a little bit more use out of my money, is I just put it on top of my cheek to give kind of like a dewy glow. Since this one is a little bit more pink, <laughs> I put it on top of the blush and it does give a beautiful kind of highlighted dewy effect. But nonetheless, I was disappointed by this, okay? My fault, I do realize that, but I want to warn others, okay? It also 
it feels sticky on the skin and doesn't set down and my hair sticks to it. I just remembered that's also why I don't like it. So I still don't like that formulation. <laughs> Not for me. Last one. This was a discovery in my e.l.f. cosmetics video where I did a comparison between my favorite high-end and luxury products to some e.l.f. products. It wasn't my first time trying the e.l.f. monochromatic multi-stick, but it really laid down the fact that I really don't like this product. It is a more affordable product. It's only $3. My expectations for it weren't very high. But with the sheer number of amazing blushes, and e.l.f. has a nice cream formula. I have some cream products from them that I really enjoy. Just with that, this is not good. Now, it looks beautiful, right? It completely destroys your makeup under. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you didn't watch that video just like everything on my cheek disappeared There was this huge line of demarcation between where the blush was and it got into a fight with the powder and concealer that were underneath it It just wasn't good. Now. This is a multi-use stick So I used in the example since I couldn't put it on my cheek on my lips and it also didn't look good on my lips It looks super dry and not nice. So don't recommend these. Tempting. I was really hoping this would work out. A $3 cream blush stick. Sign me up, but not when it's this formula. Okay, there are two powders that I really, really, really did not like this year. And the first one is the Tatcha the Silk Powder. I do believe there were a large number of other people who were not a fan of this, but this, I feel like manages to make my makeup look like worse. I put it on this side and I feel like, see my eye looks a little bit more sunken in, my concealer doesn't, it just doesn't look good. You can see it breaking down faster than the other powder on the other side. It just manages to make my makeup look worse. I, I don't know. I have very high expectations for Tatcha just because they have some of the most beautiful skincare products out on the market. Their primer is absolutely amazing. So I was so excited for this. I thought this was gonna blur all my troubles away. It certainly did not. Did this does not do any favors to my skin and for the price you pay, you know? So the Tatcha though is so bad that it's making this next powder look good, but it really isn't a good powder either. That is the Beauty Blender Bounce Soft Focus Gemstone Setting Powder. Now, you can definitely make this work based on the quantity that you use. So this is what I'm wearing right now. It doesn't look half bad, right? It's a fresh application. It doesn't wear the best, but the thing that I don't like the most about this is if you apply like a normal amount of powder, I don't even want to say over apply, but if you apply a normal amount of powder, it creates this white cast on the skin that's really unflattering. It's supposed to have a glowy finish. That's why they call it a gemstone, all of that. But the, the glow it gives, I really don't like. You know, if you want a glowy powder, look towards Hourglass. That gives a more flattering shine. This one almost builds up and creates a white color on your skin. And it's not very cute. And if you apply it everywhere, it, it just, you look weird and oddly shiny. Again, you can see it compared to the Tatcha right here. It looks better. It's holding the makeup better. I used a very, very small amount. That's key with this since I've already bought it. If I use a small amount, I don't mind it. I don't mind the sheen that it gives. But again, you just gotta work too hard and I'm just not, I'm not here for it. Okay, let's move on to an eyebrow product. Now this is a drugstore product. I didn't hear a lot of hype about it, but it's just like, terrible. And Maybelline has a lot of other better brow products. So this one, I don't quite understand why it's so bad. I did get this in a PR package and this is the Maybelline Tattoo Studio Longwear Brow Pencil. There were so many amazing brow products that came out this year as well. In fact, best year for brow products, in my opinion. Just comparing it to all those other products, this is horrible. So this is way too creamy and it doesn't even create a good line. It looks chunky in the eyebrows. It looks uneven in the eyebrows. It's way too creamy. And again, when you just try and draw a line, there's it's patchy. There's like some clumps of dark eyebrow pencil and then it skips. Everything about this, honestly, is terrible. I guess it's long wear. I, I don't know. I don't even care to really test the longevity of it because the application is not good. Not good at all. Okay, the next product, it doesn't work bad. Function-wise, it's fine, but it's hard to apply. 
and that's why I don't like it. And that is the Makeup by Mario Master Eye Prep and Set. I have mine in the shade Light concept. I really like it, and as far as how it holds the shadow, all of that, it does a good job of that. But application... I just feel like I'm tugging and pulling on my eyes. So there are two creams in here and then there is a powder. I definitely recommend using your fingers to apply this to warm up the product because these creams have already dried out so much. I, I don't know if it has to do with the packaging. Normally with cream products, you wanna screw them in nice and tight. Think of like a MAC paint pot. It originally had sort of a feeling like that, but it's dried out and I really have to dig in there to warm it up to get it to spread on the eyelid. And even when I apply it to the eyelid, I'm like pulling and tugging to get it to even spread out. I usually have to use a sponge to kind of press it out. And then you set it with the powder and everything's fine. It's just the act of spreading it out on the eyelid that's a pain in the butt. So I don't really recommend this. Just get a normal eye primer, get a MAC paint pot, get Urban Decay primer potion, whatever it is. This wasn't it for me. Okay, so I'm actually going to move on to lips now and then we're gonna finish with eyeshadow palettes but again I'm sorry mother Pat please forgive me you guys know Pat McGrath is like probably my favorite makeup brand but her liquid lipsticks that came out with her divine rose collection oof, I do not like these liquid lipsticks there's a lot of bad liquid lipsticks out on the market and I, I'm Pat McGrath is in there there's something really unflattering about her formula I am 25 years of age and I feel like you can see every single little crevice on my lips every little line and that is typically the nature of liquid lipsticks but I feel like this one is even worse than most other liquid lipsticks and it feels very drying the positive to this liquid lipstick formula is that it's very thin but how could it be so thin yet still feel so drying like my lips are begging for hydration right now they feel really really dry and it's not flattering on the lips as well it's just not the liquid lipstick formula i would go to if you're looking for lip formulas from pat her lip glosses are amazing her lipsticks are amazing her lip liners are amazing not so much her liquid lipsticks in my opinion all right i hope you are ready to talk eyeshadow palettes i pulled out a few i mean i've tried some bad eyeshadow palettes i'm pretty forgiving with eyeshadow palettes i really feel like i can make them work and all of these you can absolutely make work. So we're going to start off with the one that I'm wearing on my eyes right now. It's actually two different palettes. They came from the same collection. These are actually one of the first palettes that I tried in 2021 and it really was a bad start. So these are the Dior Trio Oblique eyeshadow palettes. So they're different than the normal quince and palettes that they normally come out with because it is a trio and let me show you both of them. And I absolutely had to pick these up because I mean, the embossments on them are incredible. Now, they both kind of look the same. So that was also a battle I had. But the quality on these are terrible. Now, you can absolutely make them work. Right now, I am wearing the Pure Glow Trio. But do you see how dark this shade is? Look how light my eye look is. I dug in here so hard with my brush. I got zero pigmentation from this. This shade, the top shade in both palettes, it's fine. It's a softer shade, whatever. The middle shade, again, you don't get too much. Looks like almost nothing on my eyelid, just a little bit of glimmer. And then this shade really just drags this palette down. It's a weird sticky formula. Like, nothing I've ever experienced with an eyeshadow before. It, ugh, it feels sticky and it gives literally nothing. And the fact that there's two of them makes it even worse because these look almost identical on the eyelids given the nature of the formula because the formula doesn't really show up. So again, you can manipulate it, you can get a half decent look, but this doesn't, it doesn't look like what you should get from the trio. It's nothing like the regular Dior formula. The regular Dior formula for eyeshadows is beautiful, pigmented, soft, smooth, all of the above, everything you could want in a luxury eyeshadow formula. Not these, they are horrible, horrible. And they're so expensive. So that's also why this is in here. You pay so much for three shadows and all three of them are kind of duds. Okay, this next one, oh, it hurts me to put this in here, but I would be lying if I didn't put it in here. Like I said, 
2021, a lot of people got mad at me in my reviews. I feel like I've more than ever gotten people telling me I was wrong and upset. I don't sugarcoat my reviews. If I don't like something, I don't like something. And this you can make work. It's actually a very pretty palette. But just knowing how great Visi Art is, this was definitely not good from them. This is the Visi Art Paris Love Letter palette, and I hold Visi Art very near and dear to my heart. They have been very kind to me as a creator, very supportive to me, and I feel like I've been very supportive to Visi Art as well. But this one, it wasn't a hit for me. This shade crumbles into nothing. I wouldn't travel with this because this shade gets everywhere. And there's a couple of the shades that just blend away and they disappear. And because I know what Viziart is capable of is why this is in this video. There's a number of shades in here that literally just disappear. Some of the shimmers are very disappointing like this green shade just blends away if you take a blending brush. So I don't know, there was something weird going on with a few shades in here. Now, with the exception of the couple of shades that really don't work, everything else in this palette is completely fine, but it really is like the shades that you want to gravitate to that don't work, which is why this is a major disappointment for me. If you like the color story of this, you love a really soft eye, maybe you're very fair, I actually do think you will like this. I think there are definitely are people out there where this palette is made for and who will enjoy it. But for me, it just wasn't for me. I have plenty of other Viseart palettes that I much prefer. The next one, I'm really scared to mention this, but truly it was a disappointment to me. And the quality is very good, so it's not that it's bad, it's just that I don't like it. The quality is good, I don't like the color story though. And that is the Natasha Denona Zendo palette. For me, this is just not, what I like about Natasha Denona. This one has formulations that are more catered to people that do not prefer thicker, shimmery, reflective, glittery kind of shadows. For me, that's what I love about Natasha Denona and this palette doesn't contain that. It's more of a subdued formula, so that's kind of strike one for me. And strike two, I just don't like the color curation here. I find it difficult to try and be creative with looks without the looks getting muddy. It's just not my favorite, you guys. I don't, I don't like it. Again, formulation is fine. So many of you guys have tried to <laughs> tell me different ways to use it, the reasons that you like it, all of that. I just don't like it. I've used it many, many times. It's not for me, but I know so many of you guys love it and so many other people love it. So don't knock it just because I'm saying I don't like it. If this looks like something that you'd like, I'd say go for it because the quality is great. It's just not what I like about Natasha Denona and not what I look for in a palette from her. Okay, we are on to the last and final product for today's video. And this one, I know you guys definitely saw coming because I've made my feelings very, very clear. I was not a fan of the Melt Cosmetics Mary Jane formulation. I know my friend Heather Austin, she loves this. The shades are way too flaky for me. The mattes in here are completely fine, but I mean, you can already see the mess that is just in the packaging itself. It gets everywhere. It gets all over my face. I'm the type of person, I like to do my face makeup first. That's my routine and I'm okay with a messy shadow, that's fine, but I have never experienced anything like this. It Not only does it just make a mess, but this formulation finds a way to embed itself <laughs> into my makeup and I can't get it off my face. It just, it makes me look a mess. I look horrible and messy. The shimmer shades for the most part, there's a couple, sh like these two on the end are terrible. And then this one's really really messy. The rest are fine. They're really pretty and the color story of this is really pretty But it's it's a hot mess express. I look a mess the color story beautiful. Can you get pretty looks with this? Absolutely the looks that I've created with this I really liked it was the fact that everything else was so messy looking that I couldn't handle it So this one was not was not for me. Anyways, there we have it. Those are the worst products of 2021 that I have tried so far. I cannot express this enough. These are just my opinions, just what I've experienced with the makeup that I've tried and that I like with my makeup preferences. So let me know what you disagree with. I would love to hear which products you do like that I don't like. I think that would be a fun conversation and then there in the comment section. And that's all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.